Kyle Winningham joins us right now. And Coach, talk a little bit about that championship game, that other big matchup that's coming up on Friday night. But can you explain to me, at least maybe give me the TV version of what you told your team at the half? <laughs> well, you know, we obviously hadn't played very well in the first half. And, and uh, you know, and, and credit, uh, you know, credit BYU. They played very well and, and had a great game plan. But, but uh, the short version is we needed to wake up and, and uh, play up to our capabilities. And, and uh, you know, we had 30 minutes to do it. That was the bottom line. What, it's a rivalry matchup, and I know everyone wants to beat their rival. But what's the significance of, of not only the win, but how you guys played in that second half? Well, I think that uh, it speaks to the the uh, resiliency of the football team, and they've been they've been that way all season long. It wasn't a, a one time shot. I mean, we faced adversity and had things we had to overcome uh, virtually the entire season, and, and they've always answered the bell. And that that was just another uh, you know uh, demonstration of what they've been doing just about all year long. There were occasions where we didn't get it done, but but for the most part, they've done a great job of uh, doing what, what needed to be done. Coach, it's kind of a moot point now because the game's over and you guys won. But I'm just curious from a personal standpoint, how much conversation there was with your staff about potentially resting guys in, in that rivalry game, knowing that the championship game, you guys had already locked up your spot. The BYU game didn't impact whether you guys were going to be playing for a Pac-12 title or not. Yeah, we did have conversation about that because that was, uh, you know, the buzz in the media as well. And and uh, it wasn't a long conversation because uh, everybody was really on the same page that, hey, that wasn't the way to go. And, the, you know, we got a, a game and we treat it like every other game. And and uh, it's important for, you know, in-state supremacy and and uh, recruiting and that type of thing. So so we did have conversation, but uh, it was short lived and and uh, very quickly arrived at the conclusion that that it was going to be treated just like another game. Coach, over the last couple of weeks or so, you know, we, we have our debates on our set or off air, and one of them centers around defensive player of the year. And I'm just curious because Chase Hansen seems like with Curtis and Yogi who are on set with me, he, he's kind of the top of the list right now. What, we see what he does on the football field. We see what the numbers are. But how meaningful is his role in your mind as you watch him as a leader on your team? Yeah, well, that, it can't be overstated. I mean, the, the leadership that he provides for this football team uh, has been uh, invaluable to us. Uh, he's the leader of the leaders, if you will. I mean, he's the guy that, that uh, really everybody looks to. And uh, he's just been uh, incredible in that role. He was the same way in high school. You know, he was a, a great leader on his high school team. He was the quarterback, which, uh, you know, lends itself to – to uh, you know, naturally to be being the leader of the team, but to do it from the linebacker spot is uh, you know is impressive, and he's he's been uh, everything we hoped he would be uh, making that transition to linebacker. I'm so glad you brought up that quarterback situation, Coach, because I'm curious when Tyler goes down, you, you got Jason Shelley, so you know he's going to be out there. A little bit of a lack of depth though outside of him. I know Britton <laughs> Covey's played a little bit of offense, and, and that quarterback we've actually seen him throw some passes so far and some trick plays this season. Did Chase, as a true leader of this team, say, you know what, Coach, I, I got you. I can start at the quarterback spot if needed. He could probably start at about a dozen spots for us, and <laughs> and uh, you're right, we're down to just two QBs, you know, with with uh, Jason Shelley and Drew Lisk, and so that third guy, you know, could very well be Chase or, or Covey or, or somebody. I mean, it's got to be somebody. So so we'll have a we've had a contingency plan, and we'll continue to do so. Coach, one of the cool things uh, about this season compared to some other years at Pac-12 Network, we got to do these road shows. We were in Salt Lake City twice to see you guys up close and personal. One of those matchups was this Washington game, which is the championship game that we're going to get on Friday night. There's some obvious differences with your team, quarterback and running back, uh, two of the ones that certainly stand out. But in your mind, over the last 10 weeks or so, how much better has your team gotten? Well, I think we've gotten markedly better offensively, and that was really that what was uh, – Problematic for us in the first couple conference games. Uh, after that, you know, starting with the Stanford game, we started to get some momentum, but uh, we didn't generate much offense in that uh, first game against the Huskies. And uh, defensively, we played pretty good. You know, we had some we did some good things. Uh, held them to 21 points, which I think is their second lowest total of the year, or tied for their second lowest total of the year. So, so the offense really started to get on track uh, shortly thereafter, and and uh, really took some of the pressure off of the defense. I think it helps that they haven't seen. Jason Shelley, at least on the football field, they'll watch tape over these last couple of weeks, but they haven't experienced him at the quarterback spot. I don't think that's really a factor either way. You know, they've got the tape and and uh, the tape doesn't lie. I mean, you can see what you need to see on the on the film when you analyze it. And so I don't I don't see that as uh, being a factor either way. 
Coach, before the season started, you were raving about Jason Shelley. I talked to some people that covered the team, and they felt like you were just kind of – it was coach speak. And, and as the season <laughs> continued to unfold, it's like, oh, man, like the kid can really play here. What was it that you saw, you know, back in August or in the summer as you were watching him prepare for the season that where you felt confident after Tyler goes down, you said, we're going to be okay with Jason Shelley? Well, a couple things. First of all, his overall athleticism. He's a tremendous athlete, uh, first team All-State in Texas, uh, basketball, football, and baseball. At least that's what I've been told. I didn't look that up, but but I know he's a tremendous player in, in those three sports. Uh, and then just the, the intangibles, you know, the poise, the confidence, how he carries himself. Uh, nothing seems to phase him. You know, he handles handles pressure situations uh, exactly like you'd, you'd like your quarterback to handle it. And so he's he's a guy that uh, we saw that you know in high school when we recruited him. That was one of the things that really attracted us to him. And uh, now he's doing the, the you know those very same things for us on the field as a, as our starter. Coach, I think about the team's success the last couple of years centers on on the defense. You have such a critical eye uh, when you're watching Phil to make adjustments. We've seen that in games as as these seasons have unfolded. Last time you guys played UW, Miles Gaskin goes off 143 yards. What have you seen on film from him that has you thinking that your guys can make the necessary adjustments in the championship game on Friday night? Well, first of all, he's a great player, and I think he's uh, you know certainly one of the top backs in the country. Um, you know, what he's done at Washington has been incredible throughout his career there. And, uh, you know, we have got to, you know, we pride ourselves on, on being physical against the run and, and trying to turn teams uh, one dimensional. And we weren't able to do that when we played the first time around, not, not effectively enough. Uh, like I said, it still, you know, wasn't a, a horrible performance defensively. We still played pretty decent. But, but uh, you know, for us to be our most effective on defense, uh, that means turning a, a team one dimensional and trying to establish the fact that uh, the running game is going to be very tough sledding. Coach, waiting for to see you guys in this Pac-12 championship game. A conference title on the line and a spot in the Rose Bowl. Best of luck and looking forward to seeing you guys at Levi's on Friday night. Appreciate that. Thanks for having me on.